Hello. I'm, <laughs> I'm Guillaume Jouvet. I maintain the package currently, and uh, I'm going to talk about the past, present, and future of the package and how some defining traits uh, that were uh, decided a uh, long time ago have affected the, the package itself and uh, uh, the, the actual like, Debian project and the ecosystem. So I'll cover the past, the origins of uh, the package, uh, and uh, what I like to call uh, the package ethos. Uh, the origins, uh, Debian uh, started in 93, and after, uh, well, some, some of these uh, I, I've no, I was not around, so uh, I've gathered from either uh, code uh, comments or mailing list posts, so uh, I guess, I mean, I, I've been in the project for, for a long time, but I don't consider my, myself uh, a long timer. I mean, I, I don't consider. I, I was not there in the region. So, if some of the of the old old timers are here, I might want to to correct. Uh, just feel free. So, yeah. so the uh, first uh, change log uh, in the package is uh, from '94. So one year after uh, the first announcement. I'm not sure how much time uh, it passed from the first implementation, from the announcement to the first implementation. Uh, and then the first appearance of Deepak at source was in 96. So there was actually a, a long period of time where people, maintainers, were actually handling source packages manually. And there, there was nothing. I mean, there was just tar and, and, and extracting and, and doing, doing stiff, uh, things manually. So this, uh, I will show later how this also affected uh, how some decisions were taken about, about the package. Uh, the, the package ethos is w what I like to think about the pillars, the design pillars that uh, were uh, decided at these really uh, early uh, stages of, of the project. And for me, this has defined uh, many things that, that are key to the Debian uh, project and our ecosystem, and many things that define us and, and that have, uh, have made it really difficult or, or easy, depending on how you look, look at it. So the first is that our, our one of the foundational pillars was that uh, we should uh, only require standard Unix tools to manage our basic formats. So the binary formats, they are um, using R and TAR, and they don't require anything else. And even then, they use standard uh, the standard formats of those. They, they, they don't use uh, unknown extensions or extensions uh, uh, specific to Debian. And this is good because at the time it allowed to handle uh, those formats from other systems. So uh, Linux and, and all the free, so like the free software operating systems were not uh, widespread. Well, there was BSD, but, but it was uh, good to be able to, to handle uh, Debian stuff from, from external projects. So it also helps uh, with recovery. So if you have got a system and then you have to unpack uh, a binary package, it's really good that you just require some standard tools that are available everywhere. They are not the most efficient way to, to store those. And we actually, for some right now, have a, a hard limitation due to our, the R container. So uh, the, the good things that gives us using standard uh, formats also, uh, this allows us to, to move forward. The other one is the metadata. Most of our meta metadata is stored in text files, and most of it is stored in DEB 822 format. And that was also uh, the, uh, the beginning of, of, uh, of the creation of the package and uh, such of, uh, of the project. And it has set a standard for everything else. Most of our uh, interchange formats in Debian, not all of them, but most are in Deb 8.2.2. Right now, there's uh, increasing use of YAML, for some from FTP masters, but this is, this is kind of the, the or a specific format for, for interchanging data. And uh, it, it is good, because you can edit it with a text editor. I mean, it's easy, really easy to, to get into, and uh, it requires uh, I mean, the fact that we, are, we have standardized on a single format, it, makes, uh, uh, it, it requires only a, a single parser. 
for everything. It allows, because for example, the package uh, stores its internal database as a, uh, as a text file, so it allows for uh, workarounds. So you, could, you can go into the package database, and that was one of the principles, design principles at the beginning, that no binary database was to be used, so that uh, sysadmin could just go there and, and like mangle whatever and, and just fix uh, easily what was, what was on the da database. But at the same time, it invites people to, to mess with the data. So the package uh, has this vector of, of users. Uh, uh, I mean, it's not just the data that's coming from the, from the dev packages that might be bogus. It's also the, the sysadmins that might be messing with, with it, all its internal details. Like all the dpackage package database is text file based. And the, this format is not expressive enough. I mean, you have to predefine what each field means because it, it doesn't have uh, semantics. So you cannot express uh, lists, you cannot express many data formats. You, you have to have some place which specifies what value uh, is what and, and, and how to interpret it. And then the, the last pillar is the, the very thin plumbing. Uh, the package, as I showed before, the package uh, at the beginning didn't even have a program to handle sources. So the, the, the plumbing in, in, in the package is really very thin. And that's one of the reasons why we have so many helpers. We have many helpers and, and different implementations. We also have like uh, tooling on top, dev scripts, and, and lots of additional tools and helpers and Git whatever build package so we have lots of uh, an environment that's built on top of the package because the the tooling is really really even if it does complex things like the package source but the tooling is, is really very very basic and it is good in a way because it allows it has allowed for exploration so uh, the fact that we have dev helper or cdbs in itself it is uh, it is possible because the layer was really thin in uh, the RPM world, for example, they don't have this kind of thing because it's, everything is provided uh, for you by, uh, by the package manager. It also gives uh, maintainers freedom to use whatever they want, uh, uh, the, whatever BCS they want to use, whatever workflow they want to use. It gives freedom to work as... as, as uh, as mo the more, uh, most comfortable way that, that you, 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 you can. But it has a price. So the price is that uh, because the tooling doesn't enforce uh, policies or doesn't enforce uh, ways to do things, uh, we don't have an archive-wide uh, way of doing things. So we don't have unified BCS. Everyone uses, even if they use Git, they use Git in a different way. They use Git, uh, like they package upstream or not, or the Debian, Debian directory. They use diver, different helpers, and then you have to cope with that. If your interest is in, in the, the distribution-wide problems, then you are screwed. And uh, the present, I'm going to talk about uh, the package, how, how it is interacting with the rest of the ecosystem, and. Uh, uh, what are the problems or the, the, the problems that uh, are faced when maintaining the package? <laughs> One of the biggest issues with the package is that it has a very vast uh, uh, interface surface. So the package has the uh, formats themselves, the binary packages and the sources and the stuff that you upload to the archive, and those are by themselves are actually interfaces. The format is defined so that you can actually create them by the standard Unix tools. So the package has to support not only creating and, and, and parsing them, but also uh, uh, the format themselves are part of this interface. Then also the, the files contained in the control area of the, of the packages, those are also part of the interface, all the control triggers, uh, all the maintenance scripts, how they are called. Uh, and those, most of those, the interface itself, it's not even versioned. So the, the difference, for example, with the, with the binary packages and source packages is that you have a version where, where you can specify what, what the format looks like. But for stuff in the, in the 
uh, control area, the, the metadata is just there. So we, it's really easy. Uh, if we extend it, it's just uh, on the global namespace. Then there's the runtime behavior guarantees. The package currently uh, follows what's supposed to be in policy, but even then, sometimes it has uh, implementation details. And when those implementation details change, that may affect packages even if they are not compliant. So the actual implementation details are also part of the interface. There was recently a fix in the package which changed uh, the, the, the cycle, breaker, uh, cycle breaker ordering. And then because a package was ordered before another one, then it broke things that were not supposed to break. So uh, then also the command line interface, all the tools that the package exposes, all those are, are used by not only uh, people, they are used also by all packages or most packages in Debian, maintainer scripts, and then also external programs that they use them. Then there's also the Perl modules that have been, there's a mix of public and private uh, modules, but even then we have packages that use the private modules, so, yeah. And then there's the libd package C interface, which is supposed to be private, but we also have, uh, well, it's semi-public, uh, semi but it's unstable. But we have packages which uh, use it because it's better than, than having an unstable uh, shared library. I try to take care of those users uh, so that they, they don't suffer like much, but still. And then we have the internal interfaces as I've mentioned before, which is, for example, the database. And uh, uh, this is part of the exposed interface, even if it's supposed to be a private interface. Uh, if I will consider changing the database, things will break. Things are actually right now depending on the database being available and being a text, text file, and, and, and there's lots of things that depend on this. Uh, one of the issues with the package is that it touches very disparate uh, areas in the project. It has to deal with everything around. I mean, what I mentioned before, that it, this is the glue of, the, of uh, the ecosystem. The package is there to glue everything together. It's gluing upstreams with Debian stuff. It's like making things fit together. And w of course, one of the uh, benefits of glue is that it, it binds things together, but at the same time, it makes them hard to, 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 to move. So the package deals with build systems, dynamic static linking, cross building. It has to like interact with all, all teams uh, that are involved in this. It also has to deal with new ports and architectures. It has to deal with uh, whenever there's a new uh, feature uh, required in the archive or, or for the system, then it has to get involved. It has to deal with binary source packages and everything that uh, relies, rel relies on those. And with policy stuff. Even though I try to make, uh, to keep the package outside of policy as, uh, as uh, I really don't want pa the package to enforce policy because it should be a neutral package, but sometimes uh, it has to take care of, of that anyway and other stuff. So uh, <coughs> usage in Debian, it's, it's, uh, as I was mentioning before, usage in, in Debian is, is really big because we have, uh, like it's used by all the packages and all, written in like any system, uh, build system, any language has to interface with all, all those. It also is used by maintainers, packaging stuff, and then by actual end users, is that means. And, and Debian, and sorry, the package itself uh, reaches far beyond Debian and derivatives, something that I think uh, sometimes people do not realize in, in Debian. I mean, uh, of course, the package is its primary user is Debian itself, but uh, the package is being used by the, not only derivatives, by uh, other systems like Fink or even people that are using the package on HPUX or IX or, or whatever, even on like iPhones or. So in the end, Debian is just another uh, downstream. It's probably the most important one. It's where all the, the development is happening, but it just at least from my point of view, it's just one downstream. So in that sense, generality and portability are really important. And that's one, one of the things that at, 
I've been trying to improve over time. Recently, I got access to the GCC compilation farm, so uh, I can port to more systems. And uh, the, but that's something that was mentioned before. That's something that I, I get the impression that uh, some people in Debian do, do not realize. And even though it's the most important project or most important user, that's still something to take into account. And maintaining the package sometimes is difficult because uh, as it is uh, uh, in a central uh, position in the project, it's interfacing with, with everything and many parts of the project are, are using it, then it, it's, it's easy to, to, get, uh, to get pulled into, into lots of, of trouble. One of the issues is the, the decision boundaries. You have to be uh, aware of when something can be decided in the package itself or when it belongs uh, let's, it's just a pure uh, implementation detail that you can change freely or it, it's kind of owned, owned by the package itself and uh, it's your responsibility or if it's a cross, cross team responsibility so you have to involve other teams because they might get uh, they, they have to decide as well or even if it's a uh, Debian wide or distribution wide decision sometimes uh, things are, are affect so many people in Debian that it's, it, it cannot be decided by just the, the package maintainers or like few teams uh, uh, around. And changes, as I was also mentioning before, can and will break things, even if the changes are correct. I mean, because the, the surface, interface surface is so, so big, like everyone expects things to work as is. So many times you can predict them beforehand and you can, you can uh, foretell that something will break and you can just look for the breakage and plan and, and create a transition. Sometimes, well, you fix some innocuous bug and then it just breaks some stuff somewhere. It's just a matter of fixing if there are not many packages. And sometimes it's a matter of damage control. You fix uh, the breakage uh, in the places you have seen but you also have to fix the package to cope with the breakage, either to stop erroring out and, and warning, and you have to backpedal and create a, an actual transition. So you, you have to, but, but the problem is that you realize it afterwards. And sometimes you just have to revert because there's no other way around it. I mean, if you start breaking like hundreds or thousands of packages, there's just, even if your change is, is correct, I mean, there's, there's no other way. So for transition planning, uh, usually what, what uh, it is done is that there's, uh, if you plan ahead, you announce it somewhere, like uh, this is going to happen, and then uh, you add a Linton check uh, or uh, another distribution-wide uh, checker, and then you might also want to do mass rebuilds of the distribution uh, to verify that nothing gets affected by the change. And even the packages might be able to emit warnings so that people uh, upgrade uh, to the new thing. Sometimes because it's deprecated or because uh, you are going to yeah, remove it. But in any case, changes are traumatic. So no, uh, there's no, I mean, in any way you look at them, like most changes in Devin are traumatic. The test suite has ameliorated this, and uh, we, right now we have uh, quite good coverage, not, not too good, I'd like to improve it, I, I like to, to improve the coverage, but uh, package right now has uh, unit testing and functional testing for the C and Perl parts, but still it could be, it could be better. And temporary solutions have a high cost, and sometimes people do not realize this and propose things, and, and they just want to get things moving, and I can understand this, and I know it's frustrating to, to, to want to do things, and because the package is on the, on, the, on the key position and might block your work, but if you introduce temporary solutions, many times that, that temporary solution will become an interface and that interface will stick forever, and the package will have to either maintain it or will have to handle a transition to get out of it. Or uh, you, might get, you might introduce changes that uh, involves l work for lots of people, and lots of people will switch 
to that to that change and when the new better or correct solution is implemented then you have to revert and implement the new thing so for me it's also a matter of responsibility i mean if if you are introducing things that you know beforehand are temporary you are imposing work on on like lots of people in the project and most of the time is taken by design and thinking about the problem corner cases testing uh it feels sometimes that there, there are patches around and it's just a matter of applying things, but this is not the case. I mean, you have to really consider deeply what's going on, what will happen, what if this affects other teams, if it, the, it affects other use cases. So just because there's a patch, it doesn't mean that it can bl blindly be, be applied. And this is probably the project where I'm most conservative with. I mean, I, I, when I, uh, the Debian was frozen, I was running almost 400 packages from experimental. I like to try new things, but for this, I don't know, maybe it's just the project itself, but it just sets you into this conservative mode. As an example, I, I just wanted to present this uh, source version uh, subs bar case. Uh, this was a, a, a subs bar that uh, had uh, confusing semantics. And around 2007, it got replaced by the binary colon source and, and source, uh, uh, no, sorry, uh, binary colon version and source colon version. And uh, at the time, as an experiment, uh, uh, there was a, a Lintian warning, of course, but as an experiment, I wanted to see how long it will take for this to transition to the new ones without active, actively pushing for it. So I just did the change in the package, but I didn't do anything else. And this is the, what happened. So at the beginning, due to the, the most of those, of those packages uh, got converted due to Lintian and because it was affecting uh, Bean and Muse, but the rest has been like lots of years that people have been converting slowly, but there's this long, long tail. And right now in the archive, I think there's 30, 40 packages still using this obsolete uh, obsolete subs bar. So I think this is a, a, a really good example of how things work in Debian. I mean, if you don't push for your changes, things will stall. They might just go like asymptotically to, to uh, infinite. I mean, just keep going. So what, as I was saying before, it's really easy to get in the hot, uh, hot spot. Many people de demand conflicting uh, features. So one team wants something, and another team wants something else, and they just don't match. And you have to try to either convince both of them or try to find a common solution. People demand things that are dis distribution specific. And right now with the vendor stuff, it's actually possible for, for the package to, to move that aside and, and make it Debian specific, but still uh, these sometimes are, are, are not, not, not good. People demand workarounds and hacks be implemented in the package itself. People demand insane things. And uh, I've heard people saying that the package is both too slow and too fast on its development. I've not yet heard the same from the same person, but uh, <laughs> you, you never know. And many times you sadly, you sadly have to say no, and uh, things just, uh, this is not the place or, or the solution is not good. And uh, I think this, uh, this is actually not as bad as it as might have uh, been in the past. But uh, many times you, if you explain the proper reasons for why you think this is not good, people understand. Or at least if you hear and understand the problem and, and, and uh, acknowledge that, uh, that this is a problem that should be fixed, most of the time people understand. I mean, they are there, understandable. And because the package is the interface, at least in Debian, it is just a focal point of, of, of conflict. So, and the future, I'll just talk a bit about uh, things that I like to see implemented and, and open, or the biggest things that, that are, are uh, currently, like people, most people complain about. So I think the biggest deficiencies right now are no file metadata tracking. The package doesn't have any knowledge about uh, stuff that has been unpacked from, from a binary package. So once it has unpacked, 
uh, a package, it loses track of everything. And this, this is actually blocking many things that, uh, that need fixing. And because we don't know, Deepakis doesn't have this knowledge, then it, it cannot do, uh, for example, the typical case is the symlink to directory uh, switches. It doesn't know if this change has been done by, by the uh, sysadmin or by the previous maintainer of the package. I'd, I'd like to fix that eventually. I've learned also my lesson that I, I should never promise dates. So uh, I just, like, this will be fixed. Uh, I'd like soon, but yeah. No compiled content tracking. So I think that this is one of the biggest uh, also uh, features that we are lacking compared to, to other systems. That the package doesn't, doesn't know what was the previous contents of the compile. So it, it cannot do a three-way merge of, of compiles. <laughs> And then uh, there's no built-in uh, package signatures. Uh, there's been lots of people requesting this. And uh, uh, we have uh, packages supporting this case, but they are not part of the core uh, deep package distribution. And uh, I recently adopted uh, Debsig Verify, and I like to integrate this better into the package itself. And then lack of more declarative interfaces. I think that's probably one of the biggest uh, also issues with packaging that's making things way more difficult. So we have lots of things that could be just placed in a file and specified like uh, alternatives or diversions or many things in the packaging that could be declared instead of, of programmed in, in a maintenance script. And then open problems. One of the biggest issues, uh, because of the pillars I mentioned at the beginning, is that because the plumbing is so thin, uh, it implies that you have to learn lots of layers to learn packaging. So you have to know the package, you have to know also the policy, how to apply it, because you have to write your rules from scratch, or you have to use a, a helper, and then you have to choose which helper to use, uh, which style inside this helper, you have to write your, your metadata. Uh, there's lots of information to use, and then you have to choose which uh, program to build stuff on top of the package build package. And uh, I mean, it, it's really, it piles up and, and it gets really difficult. I think this is one of the biggest problems we, we face, com for example, compared with RPM world. RPM or even Gen2 or m most of the other distributions, it's really central. Of course, it has the other drawbacks that they, they have really strong. Uh, policies and, and they, they don't have the freedom that we have. But uh, I think making packaging easier by, by uh, not making the, the plumbing m more thick, but at least making it easier for people to use, to get into. I, I, I don't know how to fix it. I mean, I, some of this stuff is just probably to move things lower, but I don't have a, a, a solution. But it's things that I think are important for the project. Then the other recurring thing currently is the source distribution thing. How do we distribute it? Do we use uh, Digi? Do, you, do we use the new source for, uh, formats? Do we switch completely off uh, source packages and, and use uh, proper like uh, BCS? Uh, I don't know. I think this is a, a thing that will keep coming up because we have not properly solved. Uh, and everything that is going on is good, as I've mentioned before. It's, it, it's this experimentation that's allowed but uh, I don't think we have a clear answer, and, or, or an answer that convinces the whole project. And then how to deal with applications and like app markets and all this stuff and containers. I don't know, uh, just, I think this is something that we might have to cover perhaps, but this is uh, also one of these big issues that, that lots of people seem concerned about and, and uh, with the current model we are not covering. Um, maybe we, we should not, I don't know, but just one of those big, big items. And yeah, that's, that's it. Questions? If you have questions, if you'd like to make it around to the microphone to the left of the auditorium, um, we can take your questions there. Thank you.
So, hi, Guillaume. Thanks for um, maintaining the package. Um, one issue I um, stumble into often is that uh, packages do a lot of workarounds um, for the files and user shared doc. Mm -hmm. And they do sim linking stuff and, and all ugly hacks, sim linking files, sim linking directories. I think you had a plan for that of turning those files into uh, dpackage metadata and uh, do reference counting on that. Is that still a plan you uh, envision, or do you have different ideas how this could be solved? That's something I like to do, but it's one of those things that depend on the project to accept it. So there's, there's many, many things that I'd like to improve, but if the project doesn't buy it, and then it's, it's not something I, I will be doing uni, unilaterally. So, but that's something that's in, the, in my head, and I probably will try to push for it at some point. But. I think it, it should be. In, it will improve part of of this, and it will give us uh, at least for the uh, machine readable uh, stuff. It will remove space. Uh, I mean, get rid of, of duplication, and I think it will be good. But uh, again, it's something that that this freedom. I mean, this thing that we we've got with the system just. Okay, us. so there's no technical problem with that. But I don't but think. I don't think okay. so. It it will require a bit of implementation in from the package side, but all the required inter interfaces are already there. So it's a matter of the project mostly agreeing to it. Yeah. From the deficiencies you uh, lined out, is there anything that you that is already being worked on, or anything that you think may be uh, ready for stretch re release? I will not promise anything, but uh, I do have I do have code for the compile uh, database stuff and for the metadata. I also have star started working, and ah, I forgot one, which is that uh, I like to implement to make the package uh, have its own internal tar for uh, building, not for extracting, because it already has its own internal tar uh, implementation, but. Uh, and a, tar, uh, a building tar implementation will allow us to get rid of, I mean, to build packages without being root. Because you could have a manifest which specifies which all, uh, users or owners of the files are there. So that will allow us to, to probably also optimize and only call one rule, uh, like not binary, build and binary, and also not have to use fake root and stuff like that. So 